I made a video of that before but the audio wasn't that good and also I filmed it from afar and this is a pretty convoluted and complex time travel story so that's why I want to film it properly with a closer camera and a good microphone so let's get started the number zero is the start of season two of Star Trek Discovery here we have the third world war and here is 930 years after season two of Star Trek Discovery and 20 years earlier is allegedly when Michael's parents died and she was adopted by Sarek. Sometime later Michael was supposed to die on Vulcan after she ran away from home. So this is the timeline before all the time traveling. I will use the color red to show all the time traveling. So we know that Michael's mother was developing a time suit using a time crystal stolen from the Klingons. And the time suit was created with technologies from the future which section 31 was collecting and they used the Klingon time crystal to make the time suit work and the Klingons tried to get their crystal back and so they attacked uh, the place in which Michael's uh, parents were working on the crystal and Michael's mother tried to use the time suit to go back in time and to prevent them from being killed by the Klingons but instead ended up going to the far future 950 years ahead so this is her first time jump from there she could time jump back into the past but she always gets pulled back into that same point in the future. It's like an anchor point and she cannot permanently go back into the past. She can only appear in brief periods of time and she always gets pulled back into her anchor point in the future. When she arrived in the future she realized that all life has been destroyed somewhere in the past. So somewhere here. And she starts to time travel back into the past to figure out what happened and she discovers that uh, the AI control destroyed all life in the galaxy and so she starts time traveling to try to prevent it. She said she did uh, hundreds of jumps but uh, of course we didn't see most of them, we only saw a few. So this is not a complete picture of everything that happened and according to her it was nearly impossible to make changes in the past because uh, in the end it always ended up the same way. Always uh, all life was destroyed by control no matter what she tried to do in the past. So one of the things she tried to do I think early on is uh, to prove to herself that it is indeed possible to change the past and what she did was travel back in time to 2053 to save some people from the nuclear war and I think the reason she did that specifically was because uh, those people were about to die anyway so removing them from the past wouldn't really change anything up until this point. She didn't want to change anything before that because that would mean disrupting her ever getting the time suit which means she would be incapable of time traveling and maybe incapable of saving the galaxy so probably that's the reason she didn't want to change anything from before this point so that's why she picked the time of uh, the nuclear war and tried to save a few people by relocating them to a different planet she jumped in time back here to save a few people by moving them to a different planet so this could not have been a large uh, time jump because according to Discovery when they scanned that planet they said it's a 200 years old uh, colony. So that means it might not even be a time jump. Most likely because it's a time crystal then uh, if she wanted to move them most likely she moved them in time as well in space but not a lot of time. And she moved them to a planet in the beta quadrant which is the same planet that she ended up in the future. It's possible she wanted to create for herself a base of operations because she always appeared on the same planet in the future which was desolate but she planted a colony made up from the survivors of the nuclear war who were about to die anyway and she moved them to that uh, distant planet which should not affect anything in the history of the federation until this point but it did not make any change to her planet in the future because that planet actually went extinct somewhere here as a result of a natural disaster from some uh, radioactive asteroids but she knew that up until this point that colony was actually thriving and so she knew that uh, time can actually be changed. After that she decided to save her own daughter from death because she knew that Michael died on Vulcan and so she decided to go back in time to this moment in order to try to save her own daughter. But for some reason she couldn't communicate with normal people. I guess her time suit made her slightly out of phase and so most times uh, she was not visible to normal people. That's how she was able to witness all kinds of events while remaining invisible. So only under very specific conditions she was actually visible like in the nuclear war in which uh, people did indeed see her as the Red Angel right before she teleported them to another planet. So under certain conditions people can actually see her but most times they cannot and so she cannot communicate with anyone under normal circumstances and she was basically appearing like a ghost and most people weren't able to see her and she was unable to leave any kind of message. 
Maybe because every time she gets pulled back into the future, everything she leaves behind gets pulled back to the future also. So that's why she couldn't leave any kind of note or message. Because even if she writes a message on the wall somewhere, it also gets wiped out when she gets pulled back to the future. That's my theory. It was never properly explained. But I assume she's kind of out of phase from normal reality. But she could still communicate with uh, Spock because Spock is a Vulcan and they have telepathy. And Spock has some kind of unique condition uh, similar to dyslexia which makes him able to understand these messages from the future and so that's why in order to save Michael she travels back in time to the night of her death and makes contact with Spock and Spock sees her as a red angel because he has telepathy he's able to understand the red angel and manages to tell his parents about where Michael went and they save Michael so Michael stays alive after this point after this, uh, Spock keeps seeing nightmares and visions about the Red Angel. We don't know if the Red Angel appeared to him again, but I think it is likely because it was mentioned by Michael's mother that she did try to change the past multiple times, hundreds of times in fact. So it is likely she tried to use Spock again, maybe multiple times. Maybe that's why he was going to the mountains uh, as was mentioned in an episode of TNG. Serek never understood why Spock was always going to the mountains. Maybe one time it appeared to him there and so he kept coming back to try to talk with it but he didn't want to tell his parents because they didn't believe him. They thought he's having delusions. And we know that two months before season two began Spock said in his log that he started seeing those visions again and he also saw the red signals two months before they appeared. And those visions made him go to some planet in which he once again encountered the red angel and mind melded with it and saw a vision of the future. Seeing that future caused him to go crazy and he puts himself in a mental institute where he tries to figure out exactly what is going on. In the start of season 2 of Discovery, Starfleet picks up 7 red signals in space which they cannot understand where they are coming from. And Captain Pike decides to investigate this and he takes over the Discovery to try to find the origin of all these signals. And they detect each of these signals appearing one after the other in a location which they can investigate. So the Discovery is investigating all those signals one after the other as they appear, even though they all appeared simultaneously in the start of the season, but presumably they disappeared immediately and they couldn't uh, figure out exactly their location. So after this the signals start to appear one after the other. The first signal was near the asteroid in which they found the Jetrino. The second signal was near the planet uh, Terra Elysium in the Beta Quadrant right before the planet was supposed to be destroyed, so that enabled them to save that planet using the asteroid they found thanks to the first signal. Right after that the Discovery encountered the sphere. The sphere gave all its knowledge to Discovery and also changed Saru. Right after that the third signal led them to the planet Kaminar, which is Saru's planet. And they used what they discovered from the effects on Saru to liberate the rest of Saru's people from the Baul. The next signal led them to the planet Borath, where they got another time crystal. And right before the signal they also concoct an elaborate plan to try to uh, cheer up the Red Angel to talk with it. And they had clues that it might be Michael in the future and so they actually put Michael in a death uh, trap to try to kill her in order to lure the Red Angel to come and save her. And because it was her mother she did indeed want to save her. And so she came back in time here. And then they saw that it was actually Michael's mother. She manages to save Michael and then later gets pulled back into her future. And she stays in the future forever because her time crystal was damaged at that point. Also she reveals that she didn't know anything about the red signals. She's not the one who created those red signals. So that will be explained later. After that the fourth signal appears next to Borath. So they go to Borath where they find another time crystal. And that's when they realize they can now build another time suit which will also work. Then the fifth signal appears leading them to the planet Zahia, which has a queen who knows how to deal with crystals so she helps them charge the time crystal. And meanwhile they are working on building their own red angel suit. Another point I missed is uh, right before their uh, crazy plan to kill Michael to try to lure the red angel, uh, they also detect some kind of time anomaly next to Kaminar, which was right after uh, the red signal appeared there. And they sent a shuttle into the time anomaly, which encountered a squid robot in the future, which belongs to Control. So I will mark that with a different color. So they encountered a squid robot from 500 years in the future, and that squid robot also 
transmitted something which infected Erium, which made Erium work for control, trying to kill Michael in the past. Uh, so I think this was an attempt by control to prevent the meddling of the Red Angel in the past, to ensure that it is indeed successful in getting uh, the sphere data and trying to kill Michael in the past before she can interrupt that. So this was an attempt by control from 500 years in the future to protect itself from the time meddling of the Red Angel. Maybe it also appeared next to Kaminar because it knew the Kelpians are also a threat to it in the future, so maybe it planned to do something with the Kelpians, but it wasn't successful. And around here they have the final battle against the control fleet, in which Michael plans to use her new suit and the new time crystal in order to send the Discoverer to the future, because the Discoverer contains the sphere data which control needs in order to be able to destroy all life in the future, so they're planning to jump the Discoverer to the far future, to prevent uh, all of this from happening. So we have the final battle here, but Michael is unable to open a wormhole to the future before she first uh, closes all the time loops of the past, because without all the things that happened, she would not be able to go to the future, because she needed a time crystal, so they had to get it, they had to figure out a way to charge it, and they needed the help of Jetrino, who they got thanks to the first signal, so she had to create all the signals before this event, before she can open a wormhole to the future. So Michael jumps back in time from this point into all of these points to create all these signals. Now we never saw her creating all seven signals, nor did we see her making any contact with Spock, so it remains unknown how exactly were all seven signals visible for a moment for everybody in space, or how did Spock know about the seven signals before they actually appeared. It might be some kind of side effect, maybe because those signals are made out of tachyons and tachyons are able to travel backwards in time, so maybe that somehow caused all seven signals to be visible before they actually appeared. And because Spock previously mind melded with the Red Angel, that somehow made him attuned to those kinds of signals with the same kind of tachyons, so maybe that's how he was somehow able to sense those signals before they actually appeared. And he could not have gained that knowledge from mind melding with Michael's mother because she said she doesn't know about the Red Signals, right before her time crystal was destroyed, so she's not the one who created the signals, it was Michael. So this part here remains kind of unexplained. So after Michael returns after setting off all these previous signals, she also creates a sixth signal in order to guide the discoverer through the wormhole to the future. Another thing I forgot to mention that uh, Michael's mother said that she's the one who altered the course of the sphere so that it will meet discovery, because she knew that the sphere data is what allows control to destroy all life in the galaxy. So originally the sphere data was found by control at some point before it could become powerful enough to destroy all life, so originally the course of the sphere took it somewhere else, where it was found by control or eventually ended up in the hands of control. And we know that it was Michael's mother who somehow altered the course of that sphere, so that uh, it will meet Discovery earlier, so the Discovery can somehow protect that data. And then Michael has the plan to send the whole ship to the future, so that Control can never get it, and she creates that wormhole here in the end of the battle, and sends the Discovery to the future and into the same location, so that uh, they can find her mother. They know that she's on the same planet that she colonized with the survivors from the nuclear war, and so they open a wormhole to that same time and place, I presume to slightly after her mother arrived back in the future, as not to disrupt everything she did previously. So this is the wormhole. After Discovery disappears from the timeline and Control is defeated, the bad future is prevented and it creates an alternate timeline in which all life is not destroyed. And so the Discovery should actually end up in the alternate timeline, so that means somewhere here in which control does not exist anymore, and from here Michael has to send the last signal in order to let Spock know that she arrived safely in the future. So she has to make one more jump to right before the timeline is changed. The only remaining question is how were all seven signals visible to Starfleet at the start of season 2, when we never saw Michael creating them. It's possible she did yet another time jump to the past, it's obviously still possible since she created the seventh signal from the future, so that means her time crystal was not damaged, beyond repair as they, they said will happen after the wormhole, and so since she was able to create another signal, that means she could have gone back in time and to create all seven to start all the events which we saw in season two. Even though that's kind of strange because uh, she said she cannot jump to the future before she does that. And therefore I suspect those seven signals appeared as kind of a side effect because of tachyons moving backwards in time, 
And so this wasn't done deliberately by anyone. And Spock's vision of it probably also was not deliberately given to him, but rather he somehow could sense it because of his connection to the Red Angel, which he had since childhood, which somehow made him sensitive to those same kinds of tachyons which the red suit was using. And so even though this was created by Michael, and Spock was somehow able to sense it using his telepathy. And Discovery would end up in the beta quadrant of a new timeline in which all life was not destroyed and in which the planet uh, Terra Elysium should still exist with life on it. The only question remaining is what happened to Michael's mother. Will she be in this new timeline? Or was she stuck in that original timeline in which all life was destroyed? My guess is that because of the time suit that somehow shielded her from the changes in the timeline and so she actually still remained while only the universe around her changed. So she will indeed appear in the new timeline and from her point of view the rest of the universe changed around her so the planet she was living on would suddenly become a flourishing colony with living people with the ancestors of the people that she saved in the past. So Terra Elysium will be a living colony in this new timeline because it was never destroyed by control and it was saved by the discovery thanks to the second signal. And Michael's mother will probably appear in this new timeline because she was protected from the changes in the timeline since she was an outsider of the space-time continuum anyway as a time traveler so the changes would not make her disappear and she would not get stuck in the original timeline but rather the universe around her will change and she will end up in the new timeline and can be reunited with Michael in season 3 of Discovery. So surprisingly, I think this time traveling story actually does make sense, except this one point about how did Spock see the signals before they appeared. But as I explained, it could be a side effect thanks to his telepathy and his connection with the Red Angel previously. He was somehow able to sense those signals before they appeared. And as for why Michael's mother couldn't simply talk with someone in the past, that's probably because the suit kept her out of phase for most of the time, so she could not be seen or heard by normal people. For most of the time she was able to be seen in specific conditions like the nuclear war maybe because of all that radiation and also on that asteroid captain pike actually couldn't see her even though he came right from behind of the red angel he wasn't able to see it so it's possible you have to be kind of attuned to it or to have very special conditions from around it in order to be able to see the red angel and that's why she could only talk with spock in the past and try to warn him about what's coming and that caused the spock to go crazy and that was fixed by the Telosians. And as for where the knowledge came from for how to set the signals exactly to make all of this possible, obviously Michael only knew about it because it happened to her already. But how do we explain where that knowledge came from in the first place? So I think it's possible that maybe because of all the time traveling by Michael's mother, she said she did hundreds of jumps which we never saw, it's possible that uh, that was indeed her design, that originally she's the one who tried to concoct all this plan and maybe that's what caused the, those initial seven signals but because they were in a different timeline because somehow it always uh, got undone but uh, the Federation could still pick up uh, those same signals in the same locations because of the attempts to do something like this in other timelines which always got undone and so maybe Michael ended up uh, completing the plan that her mother actually set in motion even though her mother said she doesn't know about the red signals so that's a bit of a problem so it's possible there were many other alternate timelines. In one of them, Michael's mother did indeed try to do this very same plan but failed. Uh, but it left enough clues, it left enough of the signal to be detected in this timeline. And that's how Michael was able to complete the plan that was originally set up by her mother in an alternate timeline, which she didn't remember. And she also said that in one of the timelines she saw uh, Georgiou saving Michael, sacrificing her own life. And we didn't see that happen yet. And if she wasn't able to fix the time crystal in the future, that means it had to be some other version of her from another timeline. And it's also possible maybe she did fix her crystal in the future or got another crystal. And maybe she did more jumps to the past, which explains uh, how she gave another vision to Spock and who created those initial seven signals. So it's possible that it was actually Michael's mother, maybe from this point, from just before the timeline changed, maybe she went back into the time again to show Spock the seven signals and to create the seven signals to make this entire plan possible. And maybe in alternate timeline she's also the one who engineered this whole plan which enabled them to jump the discovery to the future. Because I remind you without encountering the asteroid they would not have been able to save Terra Elysium which maybe Michael's mother needed to make it all possible because uh, that was the place in which she was resupplying. So maybe they are the ones who helped her uh, fix her time suit. So that's why she had to have that planet saved again, 
They were only able to do that if they had the asteroid from the first encounter and also they needed Jetrino to help charge the crystal later and they needed uh, to save Kaminar in order for the Kelpians to help them in the final battle against Control and they had to go to the planet Boras in order to get another time crystal and then they had to go to Zahia in order to charge the time crystal. So that explains why they had to do all of these signals before which they had to do in order to save the galaxy by jumping the discovery to the future. So the only thing missing here to make it all uh, make sense is to see another time jump either by Michael or by Michael's mother back into the start of season 2 to explain why uh, Spock saw those signals and why the Federation saw the signals before they actually appeared which started the whole chain of events. So I think I covered everything, let me know what you think in the comments below and we can discuss it in the comment section and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.